um, blood flow to your muscles. Um, and exercise is specific to the disease stage. And so that's kind of the, the, the main thing, the, kind of the point of all of this is that it has to be customized to, to your son as, as he develops. Um, and I always advocate for, before you start, consult with your physicians, especially if there's any heart arrhythmias, like Dr. Kaufman was saying, but so they can help you start kind of an exercise calendar because we don't, research out there is not showing us how much that um, a, a boy with Duchenne can do, should do, uh, so it's all individualized. So, so if you start an exercise calendar, work closely with a therapist, they can help individualize a, a frequency and exercise plan that works best for, for your son at, at his or uh, his stage of life. Um, real quick here, I just want to highlight some of the small studies that are, that are done in, in dystrophinopathies, uh, dystrophinopathies, either Duchenne or, or BMD. There's been studies that look at submax, so all of them are submaximal, meaning that most of the time when you're doing the activity, you can still talk and do the activity. There are small trials, but the take home message here is that all of these, all of these exercise st studies show that there's no bad effects from exercise, because that's what we were most fearful of, that exercise is going to cause more damage. So whenever there's this, there's a study that looks at submaximal strength training. So just more, more like functional strength, no weight lifting or anything that there was, there wasn't a big difference in function, but they, there wasn't any detrimental effects to the muscle. Um, the other one was respiratory training. I know someone asked about yoga and breathing. I think the, those are tremendous because when you think about muscles, it's not just your arms and legs, but the muscles that help you breathe. Um, that, um, that, was, that, that actually showed improvement if there was actually some um, um, breathing exercises. And the other was an endurance study that was done in uh, Becker, which is a, we have milder type of Duchenne. Um, and they actually did show increases in strength and improvement in, in cardiovascular health. Okay. Um, and here's just a, a, a recent study that looks at using an upper extremity um, arm bike for exercise. And they show that um, if the, the, the treatment group with 24 boys between the ages of 8 and 12, they, did, they used it for, uh, for uh, three days a week for 40 minutes going at half capacity. And um, they had improvement in, in those, the time test I talked to you about earlier and the North Star. Um, I can't advocate water therapy enough. Um, it's uh, especially here in California, you have better access to pools than, than uh, where I was on the East Coast. But um, it really, it really is great for stretching cardiovascular. Um, We'll move on here to some stretching. Stretching, there's different ways of stretching. Um, there's um, night splints, which I'll show you some pictures of. The Nada chair, which is this thing. Has anyone ever used that? Yeah, so it's just, you know, if, for example, that's, a, that's an easy one that you could have, um, have your son wear as he's playing video games, and it stretches his ankles. Um, and a standing wedge, which is something that you could easily build, um, and they can, you know, uh, as they're standing, they're brushing their teeth or whatever, they're, they're stretching. Like I said, I like multitasking. Nobody likes stretching. So if you can have a position that, um, that, that you can stretch at the same time, it's always at, um, advantageous. And these are two resources. PPMD has some YouTube videos as well as um, the, I, I have a, uh, some videos here if, if you want it. I have some um, DVDs that just shows um, the stretching techniques that should be used for the primary muscle groups that get tight. Um, and um, and if, um, if you if you don't grab a video from me, there's also a, a link online that um, that can uh, that's a good resource that you can help you know send to your relatives or whatever um, who may not have access to um, coming here. Uh, I'm going to skip that. So these are some examples of nighttime splints that are out there and. Um, so these two, this one and this one, actually do some active stretching, while this one is basically like an AFO, and it just holds the position in place. And so I know that um, people use different types of these for nighttime splints. Um, the important thing here is that nighttime splints, the reason why we call it nighttime is because we want it uh, you, we want your son to wear it as long as possible because that's the that shows um, um, better um, better results to actually um, gain um, range of motion and so um, these the ones that actually st uh, stretch it will um, work in that manner while this one just holds whatever joint position that they currently have um, stretching should be done as a preventative measure and so like I said start early um, make it as fun as possible okay um, uh, have it on a, a daily routine, um, use passive-active, um, different things to kind of play it up and make sure it's a habit. 
um, basically this, the question is, you know, in theory, we always think that stretching actually works. So what's, um, so here is a study that um, uh, we looked at in the natural history of boys. They, they, some boys use stretching and some boys um, use nighttime splints. And the question was, have you ever used them? And they said yes, no, and it's not done daily. And the second group, they used it on a daily basis. The take home message here is every single group, whether it's using daily stretching or nighttime splints, they had a range of motion difference compared to those who didn't use it. So, so it's, 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 it's a natural history study. So take that with a grain of salt, but still this is really indicating that if you use it on a daily basis, it does help with range of motion. And so when we talked about predictive values in time tests, does that matter? And um, what is this is showing you that these are the four time tests, running, climbing stairs, and getting up from the ground. And it says, does range of motion really play a factor in that? And that's with this p-value here, that's significant. And it's showing you that the, 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 the range at your ankle really does matter on how well you do these activities. Okay, so that being said, stretch daily. Um, serial casting real quick. Some people use that. When is it appropriate? Um, consult with your, with your PT because this is, this is used pretty inconsistently um, in, in the community. And so um, typically it's used if, if, um, if they're able to have some kind of, if they have some knee extension. It's not, it's not recommended if there's not any kind of, if some knee extension strength. And um, it's done probably um, for, for two, two, three weeks and needs to be changed every week or so. Um, some functional arm supports um, that I think I'm just going to skip because Ron's going to give you a quick demo in a little bit. Um, some powered arm supports. And then um, I just want to plug this a little bit with the robotics. There's this um, solid suit that Melinda and I are working on. And we um, want to give you kind of a brief background of what we're doing there because we're going to um, uh, need, a, need a group of young, young boys as well as men with Duchenne to be kind of our, our trial group. And so um, the stages that I mentioned to you earlier, we're going to have different groups of boys who follow under, fall under those stages. And depending on um, uh, as we develop um, some of the technologies, we, we basically want a focus group. So you can try it on. Let us know what you think um, so that we can make, make the device um, um, customizable and, and work for you. So this solid suit basically combines all those things that I was talking about into, into a, a modular suit. And some of the technology behind it is from um, the Warrior Web or a DARPA project um, that, that gives us the foundation of the products that are being used for us to develop this. And the three primary things here are the flex, flex controls, flex grip, and flex drive. So it has this kind of bodysuit Thing. So it's not like an exoskeleton where you wear it and it moves your body. It's more like a, uh, it's like a Spider-Man suit. And um, the, flex, um, the flex grip is basically what looks like the Under Armour. And that's the textile that distributes the load so that you don't have so much load on one part of your body. The um, flex grip is kind of like, um, it's kind of like your artificial muscle. So it's, it's, um, it, it basically translates electrical, electrical power into mechanical power. And so it, 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 it can, has the ability to, to kind of like contract and release like a muscle does. And then um, the flex control is basically the interface between the suit and you. And so all this together kind of has a very um, an individualized approach. And um, on, on the individualized approach, there's a huge team that actually is making this happen. And part of it is our mechanical engineers, um, uh, physical therapists, textile engineers, um, software engineers, electrical engineers, and then, of course, the Duchenne community. So we've really done a focus group and this has been a really great effort from um, PPMD has helped us to see what's important in boys and young men with Duchenne so that we actually have a product that works, that, that's relevant to, to you. And uh, so anyway, so I wanna just kind of move forward because I on the sake of time because I talk a lot. Um, Let's see. I think the main point here is that this is a suit that our, our, the point in the suit is that we have something that grows with you. So it's, it has a modular design so that it either does stretching or it assists or augments your movement as, as you need it. So you can use it um, between the ambulatory to the non-ambulatory phase of life. And the most important thing here is that to make it to where it's, it's affordable and can be brought to market, it's, uh, the, the individualized piece of it is you working with your therapist to 
make sure that the components work for you within, within the stages of your, of your life. Okay? And so then um, I'll hand it over for Ron to um, demonstrate. We have the JACO arm and the um, active assisted um, um, going. So has anyone seen these devices before used? So the reason why we kind of brought this, um, this out because um, a, oh, oops, yeah. a few years ago, I think um, um, this wasn't actually ever, ever uh, paid for through insurance. And now, um, I think what Ron, two, two, two have first two have, been, have gone through and been paid through insurance. So now there's a pathway and mechanism that this actually could be used. So we wanted to make sure that um, um, we have it demonstrated and then we'll work with, with you guys to fight with insurance to get it if, um, if it makes sense for you to have it. I'm gonna give you the mic, there you go. Okay, so we'll start with the Go Wing. This is a powered arm support system. And feel free to move around if you can't see well or want to come out. Um, this is designed to mount to a power chair. Uh, it uses the, um, the battery of the chair. It does not use very much uh, battery, so you just charge your chair up at night as you normally would. This is designed for individuals who have grasping capability but have difficulty in lifting their arms. So um, you just sit your forearm here, elbow back here. The user has control um, over the device at all times. So I have this uh, nine button pad, but if these buttons are too uh, small to push, we can use uh, bigger buttons. So I'm gonna start by unlocking it. And by pushing on these buttons, a plus button and a minus button, I can add assistance or basically take the weight of the arm off so that I'm just kind of floating. It's uh, like zero gravity so that it takes very little effort for me to be able to get to my mouth, to my body, to reach out. Nice and simple, just almost like you're, you're in the ocean just floating. So it, it just uh, uh, allows you to go from living in this world to eating, drinking, talking to your girlfriend, scratching an itch, um, opening doors. And any of you are welcome to try this. Sometimes trying it, you get a much better idea of, of what I'm talking about. You can lock it in place. So that conversation with that girlfriend gets kind of long. I know it does for me shorter with my wife. No, just kidding. So you can lock it in place so that you're not putting forth any effort at all to hold. You can do the same if you're typing and you can lock it into place. For those individuals who don't have the ability to lift it all on their own, it does have a power lift capability. So it's doing all of the work for me now. I can still move this way out in It also holds it at a level plateau. So I have uh, one gentleman who's a competitive pianist and he sets it like this so he can uh, not put any effort forth and just slide up and down the, the keyboard. And this is a perfect example of uh, making sure that you, that you maintain your musculoskeletal health because if you didn't have the range, uh, this device would even be able to, can only help you to a degree. Um, making sure that, you, that, that uh, you're getting that passive range of motion and stretching. Questions on the going? How far can you extend the elbow? Um, you don't have to maintain contact with the elbow and you don't have to maintain contact with the forearm. You have to maintain contact with one of them. And this device, it doesn't help with this component of it. It helps, uh, you have to have some shoulder movement to be able to, to use it. Yeah, so the, the, the elbow flexion and extension, this isn't going to help other than taking the weight off so that it requires a whole lot of effort, less effort to do this. And the same with the shoulder muscles, very complex joint here. Um, so it just takes the weight off, but you still have to be able to, to do some of that on your own. It does mount, it mounts on the seat rail. And so it attaches, typically it adds somewhere between zero and one inch to the width of the chair, depending on the, the chair and everything else that you have hanging on that chair and, where, and how we uh, configure it. 
So this black piece here and then the uh, the going itself. So it is easy to remove it. Sorry. So if you want to take it off of the off of the chair slide on and off. So that that's the piece that stays on the chair at all times. So your son's going out to play and you don't want him to have this big thing or you're going on an airplane, whatever, you can take it off. So how does it connect to the power of the wheelchair? Um, it it uh, plugs in either to the charger port okay. that you're already using to charge the battery, or in the case of Permobile, we plug into the back of the chair into the RNET system. All right, so again, you're welcome to play with that um, afterwards. We'll have it here all afternoon. This is... Does it come for both the right and the left hand? Yes, uh-huh. So you can set up that base to be on the right and the left. Um, you could use two at once, but it's more difficult because you're, you're typically using these buttons to um, control the amount of lift that you're giving yourself. Now some people will just set it and forget it. That lift is perfect for them. Uh, some people will, will have to adjust each time so they'll, they'll need a lot of assistance to get up but then they can't push down against that assistance. So they'll push that button to allow it to, to come back down again. It kind of depends on the individual and their physiology, how they're set up. Um, like I said, you can use the nine button switch. You can use any kind of switch. So um, you, can even, you can set it up as a head switch um, to, to click on. Um, it's uh, a blow, uh, sip and puff, any, any kind of switch we can, we can work with. So uh, this is Jayco, uh, robotic arm. This also mounts to the power chair. It also goes on the seat rail. Um, both these devices will, if, as you uh, uh, retract, or excuse me, uh, recline, they'll recline with you. Um, uses the, the uh, wheelchair power um, also. Um, this is really uh, designed for individuals who uh, don't have lift or grasping capability. So this becomes uh, an arm and a hand for them. So this is controlled with the controller that the individual is currently using to drive their chair. So if they're using a joystick or a sip and puff or a head array, whatever they use to drive their chair is what we tie into. So we're not adding any extra hardware there and you're not having to learn to use a different kind of a controller, a different kind of a, of a joystick. So Jayco has uh, 16 different moves. I'll just step you through them. Forward, backward, left, right, up, down. I'll put it out here so you can uh, see the hand a little bit better. The hand will open and close. Um, this is a grasp. Um, it can also do a pinch if you're picking up something small. And then we have the ability to articulate the wrist in any way um, that a human wrist can move. And in some ways that the human wrist can't move. I'd love to have this capability. <laughs> Just open that jar one-handed, right? <laughs> so um, to give you some sense of, of grip strength, because that gets asked a lot, somebody want to come up here and shake hands with Jayco? Thank you for uh, volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's maximum force there. Does that hurt? Okay, good. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Don't be such a freaky cat. <laughs> so that's how Jayco shakes your hand. Um, now, do we have a, um, a bottle of, or anything that we can put in his hand? How about, uh, uh, even better is uh, maybe that kind of a bottle. So 
So it's got a very strong grip, even though it's not strong enough to hurt somebody, when you put something in there, it's going to hold it very tightly. So that'll hold your cold bottle of beer or your son's cold bottle, I mean uh, his soda. <laughs> so you may have noticed me pushing buttons. You know, a joystick or a sip and puff only has four movements, right? Forward, backward, left, right. I mentioned that Jayco does 16 different things, so we have to have different modes uh, that Jayco moves into, you know, from a finger mode to a wrist mode to an arm mode. And we do that by clicking a button, um, and that button can be anywhere on your chair in any fashion, uh, much like this. Um, often we'll put it next to the joystick if you're using a joystick. It could be a sip and puff, it can be a head switch. Um, we even have um, blow switches where you, you blow at it and, it and it'll change the mode. Um, so these are all very customized to, to set up to your particular uh, needs. Questions about Jayco? Of the hand? Oh, the button? You can whatever kind of button that you want. So we can use a micro light, which is just basically a feather touch to it. We can even use a proximity switch where all you have to do is get close to it and, it, and it'll activate. Yeah, so it's very much like the, the human arm in, in many fashions. Um, fully extended, it can hold about three and a half pounds or about a half a gallon of milk. Um, as you get closer, it can hold more just like your own arm can. So most of the things you're going to find around the, the house, uh, it'll have no troubles uh, holding on to. Um, so... A touch screen typically requires, you know, some, some type of warmth from your hand um, or a, a pointer uh, that's set up so it can hold a, a pointer. Um, it can, you, you saw it holding a bottle or a glass. Uh, we also have a utensil holder, which you can see back here, so you can use it to feed yourself. Um, you can use it for, uh, to hold electric toothbrush to brush your teeth or, um, you know, I use it to brush my long hair. Um, it can open a door, yeah. If, it, if it's not super heavy, lever doors are easiest. If it's a round doorknob, then we provide a, a rubber a slip a cover that goes over it that has wings on it so that Jayco can grab and, and twist and then uh, pull it open that way. Yeah, elevator buttons, yeah, no problem. Uh, microwaves, uh, you can use it to get into the refrigerator, pull out a drink, pour yourself a drink so you can hydrate, uh, you can nourish. You know, you can have uh, meals ready and pull them out of the fridge or the freezer, put them into your uh, microwave. Um, it allows you to get out the door. It goes down to the floor. Uh, so if you drop something, you can pick it up. You know, we get that request a lot. You know, I drop my cell phone. Um, scratch an itch is another uh, big use for it. I feel, I, I would be comfortable scratching an itch on your face. <laughs> <laughs> So, so yes, absolutely. Um, you know, my nose itches, right? Not anymore. <laughs> uh, we can set up a force field around the individual so that they can't hit themselves with it. Uh, sometimes we'll do that early on if somebody is just learning. Um, you can also set, that's called a no-go zone. You can also set up a go-slow zone. So as it gets close to your face, it automatically will slow down. Some people like to use that when they're learning to eat, with a, especially with a fork. They don't want to, you know, smack themselves with it. So it'll slow down as it gets uh, closer. Uh, we don't use it very often because, um, um, you know, it, it, you learn pretty quickly with this. Training time is about two hours. That's all I spend with an individual. And then after that, it's, uh, it's just about practicing. Yeah, so it, it comes with a case that you fold up and put it in a case because most people don't, you know, you can't get, you don't want to put this and your power chair on the, the airplane. Um, but it is easy to take off of the uh, airplane, or excuse me, off of the, uh, the uh, power uh, wheelchair. So there's just two levers holding it in place and it lifts off like that. One's for power and one is for the controller, so these just unscrew. It weighs 11 and a half pounds. 
Um, it's made out of carbon fiber, so it's extremely strong, but lightweight. So it doesn't make your chair drive funny, and um, you know the caretaker can take it off the chair pretty easily. It's, uh, it's uh, weather resistant, but not waterproof. So it's much like a power chair. If you get caught in a rainstorm, it's not the end of the world. Um, but we don't want you taking it in the swimming pool with you. Don't go after your rubber ducky in the, in the tub. <laughs> Other questions on either one of these two? I think this goes for both devices. The main question I have is, so no you can't it's not as fast as a normal human hand um, what you'll find is over time and that time is usually a couple of months your brain starts to hardwire to the movements um, so we give you a screen that will let you see what mode you're in um, but what we find is people just start operating it much like you drive your chair you know you don't think Oh, I'm going to go forward and, and veer over to the right. You just do it, right? Um, so it, it kind of gets to be that way as well. But it's, not, it's never going to be quite as fast as, as the way that I move. You can change the speed. So we tend to start it out a little bit slower when somebody's learning it. And then as they get better, they say, hey, can you speed it up? Um, that can be done over the internet. We give you software that you can put on a laptop or a tablet or a PC and we can dial into your Jayco and make adjustments uh, over, over the internet. If it breaks, we fly a rep out to your home to repair it, um, or we FedEx overnight another arm to you pre-programmed to your custom settings um, that we keep in our office so that you can just swap them out um, so that you're not without it for a period of time. Because, as you can imagine, folks get pretty, uh, pretty used to it. So does it come with just one size adult size or do they have uh, different sizes? Um, just, just one size. Um, uh, we have a shorter version called Miko, but we really typically don't sell it into the, into the um, end user community um, because it can't reach to the floor. Or if it reaches to the floor with a small chair, as the person gets bigger and gets into a bigger chair, then it can't reach to the floor. And that's really a, a big use that we see uh, for it. Um, and then just being able to open doors and get into cabinets and drawers and open the refrigerator, you want something bigger. Um, when you're not using it, you don't have to have it uh, sitting out here. You can put it into a retract mode or a storage mode, and that position can be anywhere you want. So often it'll sit on the side of your chair, either on your armrest or wrap around to the back of the chair. And so, you know, there's a reason it's black. It's, it's meant to blend in with the chair. Um, so then when you want, want it to go, you push the button and it's ready to go. You can set some prefix positions. So some people like to do this for repetitive tasks like eating. They'll set a prefix position down here and one up here. So push of a button, it goes down to your plate. Another push of the button, it comes up to your mouth. Uh, some people will set a prefix for going out to shake somebody's hand. So if somebody approaches them, the hand comes out like this or drinking like this or scratching an itch that you have in the same place all the time. You just set a point and it goes right there. Well, if you can hold our questions till maybe mm -hmm. the end.